Hello, welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, the podcast where you just put us on in the background so we can road rage with you on your way to work. This is my beautiful wife, Nona. I am your man host, Andrew. Welcome back to the show. We are presented by America's Technology Center of Excellence, Lemax Media, lemaxmedia.com, and nonaphelps.com. Get your insurance in North Carolina, South Carolina, and sometimes Florida if she feels like it. If I feel like it. So, we are here today we are gathered here today mm. to talk about the amazing club that is uh what's what's that show you like yeah the real housewives okay we are here to talk to you about the epidemic of real that's what we'll call it, real vet bros there's an epidemic of vet bros yes yes and they're going to be in the comments. But hurt. But hurt. Do you remember those videos of that guy a couple of years ago that would like record himself shirtless or wearing a tank top or whatever in, in his pickup truck with like just the dome light on? He was like always screaming at the camera. Nope. Have literally no idea what you're talking about. They know what I'm talking about. Okay. That's basically what the uh, veteran community is slowly becoming oh this best pool of morons with their echo chambers screaming into the void and nobody supports each other everybody's everybody's got some issue with everybody else everybody's got their little niche and if the wrong person likes you it doesn't matter if you did anything wrong or not if the wrong person likes you now there's an entire community that doesn't like you as well and you don't feel that you fall into this bracket in any way shape or form no i make my own decisions i have companies that i dislike and companies that i like and i'll stand up for the ones that i, I do meant like. the echo chamber oh no absolutely not have you actually seen my social media everybody hates me that's the opposite of an echo chamber Okay, then give me an example of what an echo chamber is. An echo chamber is for people minions go following. No, people that just agree with everything that you say. You're always right because the only people that you are friends with or follow or follow you are people that agree with everything that comes out of your mouth. Whether that's because they're a follower or because you have put yourself into this weird little box where all you do is talk about things that everybody's going to agree with and you want to make agreeable statements all the time. I was picturing an echo chamber to be like an empty cave. You've never heard of an you, echo chamber. No, I haven't until right now. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's what it is. It's just, a cave. It's you talking and everybody echoing your shit back to you. Nobody oh, disagrees. I was thinking just one single person. No, just no. Spewing their bullshit. Nobody, nobody like disagrees with you. Everybody agrees with you. Okay. Nothing you say, you know, like everybody has like their political allegiances on social media. And if you come out and say anything that contradicts or points out any sort of hypocrisy or facts or anything like that, then you get mounted on by a bunch of troglodytes. So this is going on right now in the vet bro community, and you're going to tell us all about it, myself included, as I know nothing about this until right now. Yeah, it's just, you know, the the space is fucking, everybody's got, there, there are only so many things that you can do realistically as like a trend setting popular veteran right used to be start a t-shirt company okay then and it became now, now what is it then it became youtube comedy okay making goofy videos then it became coffee companies okay then it became podcasting we just happened to jump in on the latter or the former the latter would be the first so but this is not a military oriented podcast. That's kind of, I just happen to be a veteran, but we don't typically talk about military and veteran issues. We talk about them as they pertain to like our real life, because it does impact our real life, mm -hmm. but we don't go out of our way to just talk about military and veteran issues every day. Correct. So what is it now? I, I think it's just podcasting right now. Boy. Yeah. So we're being lumped in with them or are you trying no, no, to no, branch no, away no, from it? No, nobody has a, nobody has a problem with us. I'm just saying like in general, like, um, actually Ben Bunn made a comment, I believe on his Instagram when he got his equipment delivered to, for the warrior rising podcast, mm -hmm. uh, something along the lines of having a podcast is now 
like the modern day version of having a ham radio, you know, having a channel that you can speak on, people can listen to. Because essentially it's, I mean, for podcasting now with social media and stuff like that, it is kind of a two-way street. But at the end of the day, like we could just talk to the microphone and camera and ignore what everybody says back to us. Realistically. That is correct. We could have a podcast with zero followers yeah. and be our own. Yeah. So bullshit on microphone. So there's a, you know, there, not everybody runs the most successful version of another thing. For example, some of the most popular military and veterans, military members and service members, whatever, and veterans, um, don't run the most popular accounts on Facebook. And those people don't run the most popular accounts on Reddit. And you can't be the master of all social media platforms. Um, if you had enough money and enough people, you could. But yes, I yeah, for ninety nine point nine nine percent of people, yes, you're right. Or you could go around like all these corporations do and buy them up. You could take all of the successful ones, buy them up, and rebrand them as yours, or turn them into a sub brand of whatever your community is. So, I was never like. I think the chive was one of, have you ever heard of the chive? No. What is that? The chive was like what Drinker Bros wanted to emulate early on. That's not like the onion. I've heard of the onion. No, the onion's a satirical it, news. Right. The chive, the chive sounds like a spinoff of the onion. <laughs> no, the, the chive was like, you know, like action sports, cool girls in bikinis. We're doing cool little events and everybody. Sounds like something that you have would you be ever, totally into. Have you ever heard of hot or not? No um like you know like rating have you ever heard of like rate my professor or anything like that back in the day uh yes yeah. i never used it but i vaguely heard about it like freshman so year they they helped spawn a lot of the all those bullshit magazines that are trying to get subscribers and grab your information for marketing purposes okay. when you go and fill out the form to vote for your friend to be the next model on the cover of whatever magazine okay um, they were kind of the ones that started that and they exploded. They, they still exist. Actually, all those, um, when we go to like B-dubs or what was that place that had like 150 TVs that Cooper and I just went to for the hockey game? Uh, Bistro. walk on. Yeah. Walk on's Bistro. That's yeah. They spell it the, uh, French Creole way with like E-A-U-X or whatever, but. Oh, okay. Anyways, semantics. Yeah. So, what's my train thought where I was getting off? Oh, you know, when they, when they show all those, the series of just endless videos, it's like a loop of like, here's fail videos, and then here's cool videos, and then here's action shots, and then here's like Red Bull sports, like racing, and then like it loops back and it comes, that chive is usually in there. Like there's usually a lot of content from chive. They have their own, like they have their chivettes the girls, whatever. But so anyways, that's kind of, that's what every, you know, way too much about all of this. <laughs> this, this goes way back. This goes back like 15 plus years. I've like, literally never heard of any of this. I am a child of the internet. So. I am not. I am the internet elder at this point. Anyways, that's, that's like what everybody wanted to emulate. Everybody wanted to be like the chive and there were other groups that, that stood up. But it was the coming together of Article 15 and Ranger Up that, and, and Range 15 creating that movie and bringing Tim and all these other veterans and stuff into one single project mm -hmm. is what gave them the big boom of success mm -hmm. in like 2014 to 2016 timeframe. Okay. So they went from when, when I joined Drinking Bros originally, when it was still Drinking Bros before Facebook nuked the group, they had like, 2,000, 4,000 members. It was still pretty small and niche. And where were you living at the time? Up in Indiana? Yeah. Okay. And how did you hear about it? Nick sent out a letter to T-shirt club members for Ranger Up. Okay, so you were already a Ranger Up subscriber yeah. for their T-shirt club. Yeah. And that... Yes. Gotcha. Okay. He sent out a letter saying... But how did you come across Nick and Ranger Up? Working for Ranger School. Being, okay. in, being in the army. Which I'm yeah. trying to follow the train here. I have, or I had, um, Ranger Up shirts that if, if 
you looked at them nowadays, you'd be like, oh, it's really cringe. Like the full print, like all over, like uh, Ed Hardy type shirts. Back Ew. Yeah, yeah, that's That was that's, very 2007. That's how Ranger Up. That's how I feel like everything. That's how Ranger Up started was doing stuff like that. And, and Affliction, then, that was the other yeah, brand, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So theirs was all like the sheep wolf, or sheep dog, or whatever. That's what. Because we're all sheep. No, that's what the police like to call themselves. We haven't rolled the intro yet. Maybe I'll just skip the intro. I already said the intro. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna skip it. So, if you're a cop, sheriff, patrol officer, whatever, they like to call themselves sheep dogs. Don't I know. have never heard this either. Yeah. So I'm just saying a lot of nevers because. <laughs> All of this is going over my head. Okay. Okay. That makes it fun. I don't know. Or maybe it doesn't because you're not talking back. You're just yeah, you're I'm consuming just, and not I'm contributing. Cons yeah. So I'm I'm not an active participant at this point. Yeah. So that trend got old really quickly. Everybody made fun of it. And then everybody kind of shifted into, you know, the self deprecating humor that became the cool thing for a long time everybody was making fun of themselves and then as things started getting larger you had people that you know they're reaching out they want they want a job or they want a sponsorship or they want you to give them a shout out and everybody wants everything for free. nobody wants to contribute financially you know labor they don't want to do the legwork they want you to oh i'm a veteran too i deserve a shout out from you, even though you don't know who I am, what I represent, what my product is, what my service is. I could be just a complete and total piece of shit. Did you do that? No. Okay. But I'm saying that that's when you hear these people that are mad at Black Rifle or they're mad at whatever other company, nine times out of 10, that's what it is. It's not because they had a bad product. It's not because they had best bad customer service experience. It's not because of anything else. The worst they just weren't made to feel special. Yeah. The worst experience that a lot of these people have had or have continuing is issues with their delivery. And that's nothing that unless Black Rifle created their own logistics company, that's nothing that they can control. The best that they can do is reimburse you, give you a credit, send you another product, whatever that is. That's basically all that they can do. Hey, we're sorry. FedEx fucked it up, but here's another bag of coffee or here's another t-shirt or here's this. You've gone through it with them with, we just talked about this a couple episodes mm -hmm. ago. So once you become popular enough, okay. everyone wants to dig into every little thing. They're going to dig into, if assuming this becomes popular, they're going to dig into every little thing about your life. They're going to look, they're going to look you up on Google. They're going to find your voting history. They're going to, find news articles about you and cooking classes that you held years ago during COVID. Somebody's going to latch onto the fact that you had kids at your house during COVID. They're going to berate you for that. There's people that are going to celebrate you for having kids at your house for COVID during COVID to have cooking. Like you're just, you're not going to win. You're never, ever, ever going to win. And it used to be kind of funny to say like, oh, you know, inner service rivalry, like army hates the Marines, Marines hate the army, Navy. Everybody hates the Air Force. Like, it's like funny, but it's also in a way kind of pathetic sometimes mm -hmm. because it's a first world problem. Mm -hmm. We are currently a peacetime military. We have no active conflicts that we are not a proxy of. We are not a first party participant of any of the ongoing wars or conflicts around the world. We're just sending supplies and rations and weapons and tanks and just to be clear i didn't know any of this internal rivalry until i met you nobody in my immediate family is in the military or a veteran and that's just not anything that a non-military person has any ideas even happening so i'm not a participant in any of the other big branch reddits so i don't know what r slash navy or r slash air force are like all i know is r slash army and i'm not even really a participant in there i consume r slash reddit's content in twitter okay they he's he has a bot set up where if 
if a if a specific uh reddit post becomes popular enough it gets published with like the snippet headline to try and click you through to reddit okay but the founder of it actively uses the r slash army who is the founder i don't actually know i don't know i've never looked into anybody else like i don't care that much it's and not what important. is the content that is being posted it's sometimes it's like my wife's cheating on me what do i do oh sometimes it's my okay. my soldier's a piece of shit and <laughs> and i need to figure out how to punish them and sometimes like depending on the amount of details or your rapport within the community they might be like oh yeah i've had soldiers do that before too and then other times like give us context are you really the piece of shit gotcha so there's a there's some balance there like sometimes it works out <laughs> so it's a huge variety yeah okay yeah but if the if the post okay. if the post gains traction on reddit it gets published on twitter and then so typically i'll respond like on twitter i don't very frequently go all the way through to reddit unless i want to read the full context okay it's on you have like your so like your your posts on your website right you have your title then you have the the context the body of the the post mm -hmm. typically i only see whatever the title is okay and i'll respond to the title without reading the context usually it's pretty cut and dry i don't care about you know, the, think of the i don't know details do matter think of the cooking and baking articles right where they have to give you their life story because mm -hmm. they have to qualify everything it's a little bit different you need to know the ingredients and the directions to go into the recipe not just the title if the title is no, no, chocolate no, no, chip cookies no, no, no. I'm saying, and I'm, that's all you know no no i'm saying you could put a whole bunch of i'm saying they tell their life story yes, i understand that but you do need to know some detail more than just the title like the ingredients that go into it the, i'm not talking about the ingredients i'm talking about the diatribe about my life story before you get to the details before the ingredients the completely unnecessary part. Right. I grew up on a small ranch I understand with my that, three dogs. But you just related. Because, so if you would listen to the entire analogy, it would make more sense. I did hear it and I was debunking it. There's no debunking. We don't need to know about you living on a ranch with your 75 nieces and nephews. We just want to know the ingredients. That's the part. I understand that, Andrew. Yeah. I understand that. But you were comparing title to title and saying that you don't click past just the title. I'm, and I understand that. I'm talking about the other the components of on the actual Reddit post itself. I'm saying that the like when I respond to content on Twitter, it's because I don't need the context. Yeah. It's, hey, I fucked up and got a DUI. What do I do? I don't need to know the fucking context of why you got a DUI. You're just a moron. Okay. That is what I'm talking about. If I click through to the post and it's like, I've been in the army for 14 years and this is the first time I've ever gotten in trouble and I think I should be able to get away with it because I have a good, like, I don't care. You got a DUI, you idiot. Fucking take your punishment. Reddit's not going to help you anyways. Take your punishment. Get it over with. Take your article 15. Take your reduction in grade. Take your reduction in rank and move on. There was no reason to post about it on Reddit. Now you just look like an idiot. There was, okay. oh, and some people are like, oh, I'm accepting responsibility. Okay. Probably nobody on the Reddit thread or on Twitter are in your unit or in within your command. We didn't care what you did. Go take care of it at your unit. That's, you don't need legal advice from the internet. That's what JAG is for. Go get yourself taken care of. You don't need to post it on Reddit. All right, so circling back to podcasts are the new vet bro. So in some ways, the, the ones that want to talk just specifically about military veteran history, they're basically a dime a dozen right now. And none of them truly differentiate each other. Some of them will try and differentiate each other with certain specific guests. And that's all they're known for is their guests. They're not actually known. The hosts are nothing. They're just there to pay to bring in Jocko or Tim Kennedy or Matt Best or Evan Hafer or whoever else. I don't even know. I don't even really know that many, like, outside of those circles. We didn't even know about um, 
Savage Tactical that's here in Wilmington. And we live here until the whole incident with your midget stalker last year. Mm. Yeah. Mr. My SS and swastika, swastika tattoos are Buddhist symbols. Yeah, okay. You're just a fucking Nazi. And that's another problem. Like, so the blind trust as well sometimes is an issue. Just bringing anybody and everybody in and not really vetting who they are publicly or privately and then getting burned on the back end because of it. Now you look terrible because you had on somebody or hired somebody to model for you with Nazi tattoos, not just one, but like, I think they found like seven. Uh, Justin tagged me on an Instagram video about how far back this had gone. It had gone back like a year or two. Somebody big on Instagram who I don't know pointed this out, called them out for it. And that was one of the many reasons they were already having issues with him. He was having legal issues. Like, I don't remember. Obviously, I never looked at Well, I think we found a mugshot of him, didn't we? Yes. Domestic abuse. Do you guys want to know more details? Because you're being super vague about it. Well, I don't know his name, and I'm not going to... I don't want to speculate and say something and, like, gotcha. actually drag somebody for something that they didn't actually do. Gotcha. I'm but sure he does he... actually have Nazi tattoos. Yes. Multiple. I mean, like, I think he had them, like, both inside of both of his elbows, on his forearms, on his shoulders. I don't know. You did a deep dive into it. I didn't do a deep I just, dive. I was I tagged. just sent you the information about this person yeah. who was... Harassing you and stalking you on social media. This, and you've been off of social media for months. a long time now. Yeah, like about Almost six months. Over six months now. No, longer than that. It's like this summer. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, this dude, and then I reached out to, or I tagged somebody, I can't remember what it was, and they responded, and they are like, hey, reach out to our owner, and he'll fill you in. I think his name was Brandon. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does sound correct. So I reached out to him, sent him an email, and this is actually just after we stood up Veteran Wiki, too. So it was around July or August when this happened, and I reached out to him, and he fills me in on all the details about how he was acting towards them, towards their photographers, the female models. I guess he was just an alcoholic. You said that one of the bar owners downtown knew who he was as well. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, Eagles Dare? Mm-hmm. That What's is correct. Name? What's his name? Joe Apkrin. There you go. Visit Eagles Dare if you're in Wilmington. It's on the north side of town. In the gentrification zone, she knows. She's like, yeah. yeah. He also owns Taco <laughs> Baby and Poor House mm-hmm. and a not, brand new spot. Not Poor not Tap Poor house. Tap Room, but Poor House. Yeah. One of them is in a bank. The other one is underground. Yes. Go to the underground one. Yes. So, yeah, it, everybody kind of came out of the woodwork. I only actually had one person that saw my posts that vaguely defended him really and that was alex crotu who lives out in la now he used to go i don't know who that is he's one of the he's one defended of the, how he was like oh i i know him he's not a nazi this or that and i was like it's funny alex because everyone else who knows him and knows him from the same place that you know him from is saying the opposite so i'm kind of getting sus vibes yeah yeah <laughs> like maybe you are too yeah I've never, I never hung out with Alex outside of the gym, so I don't know anything like about. I don't know any of these people. He seemed like a cool guy. I mean, he was, I mean, he's another really short dude, but. Oh, little Napoleons. I mean, I never, I never got the vibe that Alex had in Napoleon Complex. Mm. He was always like nice, helpful. He, you know, if you were in the gym for the first time, he would come up to you and help you out. Like. Gotcha. He was never, never. Publicly, never publicly was ever, you know, anything other than a genuine person that I saw. Gotcha. Okay. The girl that he dated for a long time before he moved to LA, which I thought originally she moved with him. And I don't know, I think she came back. Or something. I saw she's married now. Mm-hmm. Um, they seem to have like a really good relationship. I went to his going away party at Fox and Hound. That's how long ago that was. That was like six plus years ago. What year was that? Like six plus years ago, I think. Something six, oh. five, six years ago. Never mind. 
Oh, because you thought it was when you were working there? Yeah. No. Yeah, it was, I haven't even been here lo- as long as you, a lo- uh, I haven't been here in Wilmington since you worked there. Because I've been here for eight years. That's right. When did you work there? 2007. Yeah, that's not eight years ago. <laughs> 17 years ago. Yeah. You weren't even old enough to drink then, were you? No, I wasn't. You were just a baby waitress. Just a baby. Walking around, serving people food and getting hit on. I was 18. I just turned 18. Still not old enough to drink, so right. my, my point stands. Right. But I was old enough to be in there. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the biggest things, and actually I've kind of seen the shift in this on social media in general, at least with my social media circles. Everyone used to always make fun of everybody, and everybody would like pile on and it'd be haha, like whether or not it was malicious or not. Mm-hmm. Some, a lot of times it was, a lot of times it wasn't. It just depended on which friend poked fun of you first, if you were going to tolerate it or if you were going to be pissed off about it. Okay. But now I've seen a lot more people seemingly, genuinely trying to be positive, supporting each other. Like, hey, good job being back in the gym stuff that people would have looked at 10 years ago and is that because you recently walked back into the gym no no, no this nobody week no no no, 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 no nobody's saying from personal experience no no, no 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 nobody talked to me about it i haven't even posted on facebook that i'm back in the i'm gym. On, not on social media so i have no idea what you post you could say my life is fucking shit every day and i would never know no all i ever talk about about you is good stuff i don't ever say sure. anything i don't go sure. look I'm not on social media. I cannot see. He'll be back one day. My Twitter's public. Like, My Twitter's public. All I ever talk about are good things. I've never me. even been on Twitter. I've only ever had a you Facebook don't have to go and on an Instagram. Everything on Twitter is on Google search. You could literally just Google search. And, Andrew Lemax. Or Lemax Media because I stole my business account after I did my little social media hiatus a couple of years ago and lost my personal account. That sucked. I've had a couple. He still of, cries about it, guys. Yeah, because I had Twitter is like his baby. I had, it's his only baby. I had cool followers, and now I have cool followers again. But they're, I'm, I'm missing. Would stuff. you like to share all about your Twitter and your most recent experience? Yeah, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah, okay. wrap up the uh, vet bros. Yeah. Okay. So and and they get mad when you say that. That's like, that's an insult when you're a vet bro. You're the one who said it. I'm just. Saying what you said, I I don't know any other term not, for it. I'm not saying that I'm upset. I'm just telling you that that's. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm intentionally using it, intentionally using it to rile people yes. up. So whether they make it to this point in the video or not, that's completely different. They've story. already turned it off and said this guy is so fucking annoying. Exactly. And then his wife is so boring. Exactly. Because she has no idea what the fuck she's talking about. But she's but, just trying to follow his stories. But do you understand how, why I made that analogy that it's like the Real Housewives? Yeah. Because it's all the infighting and bickering, um, you know, so, so Spearhead, right, is now, it's still Justin's thing. If Justin were to walk away from Black Rifle, he could remove Black Rifle's ban- branding from it and turn it into something completely different. He made sure that he and maintained- And this is just a Facebook group, correct? We started a Twitter, uh, uh, I can't remember what Twitter calls it. We'll just call it a group, but that's community or something like that. So it's just a quote unquote safe place for people to go and post random shit? No. There okay. is. I'm just trying to follow like there, what, there is, what is the purpose of Spearhead? Talk about, you know, post cool stuff. Like everybody wants to show off their gear and swag and apparel and their new mug. And I just got my coin or I got, you know, this new bag of coffee. Everybody, everybody wants to show it off, and that's kind of the place where like-minded people can come and talk about it. There are also people that come in there that have no intention of ever even consuming Black Rifle products. They don't really care okay? because you're still adding to their marketing numbers. You're going to see something, and you're going to share it or whatever eventually. So it's, you don't have to be just a Black Rifle coffee consumer. People will go in there and post about grilling. People will go in there and make jokes and memes and stuff like that. But overall, it's supposed to be a community that revolves around Black Rifle. Overall. Okay. It's it's a marketing tool. Okay. You need to let people stretch their legs a little bit, but every now and then you kind of... So we're going to have a he's wrong, she's right group? If somebody else creates it. I mean, we already have subreddit. We already have pages and accounts and everything everywhere else. If somebody We do? Yeah, we have... Facebook page, Instagram, like 
Pinterest. We have everything. We just don't have the, we, the subreddit basically is our initial, but right now the only posts to the subreddit are posts promoting the videos. If other people were to start contributing and wanted to moderate the community, that's perfectly fine. Are you looking at the camera, hoping that somebody will take that role? No, I don't think it's going to happen for a long time. Okay. We'll see. Bella, stop. Sorry about yelling. Dog's squeaking at the back door. I told you that they needed to go out before we started. Mm -hmm. No, no. Told now Bella's in here with us. They haven't met Bella yet, right? No, They've they only haven't. Met Willow. We've only talked about her and her allergies. She's ugly right now. I don't want to see her. Don't be mean to her. She's right here. She can hear you. She looks like she's part of a dog fighting ring. So mean. My wife is, uh, what's his name? Who's the quarterback in the NFL? <laughs> Michael. Yeah, there's, he had a brother too, Marcus. But yeah, Michael, Michael something. Played for the Falcons. I think he went to Virginia or West Virginia. One of those two. Baby, I would never fight her. So. Now that we're kind of concluded with that, and we've expressed how ridiculous a lot of the vet bro community is, let's talk about the uh, USA Twitter post the other day. Yeah, go for it. Dive right in. That took off all on its own. Okay. Actually, before we even get to that, we should talk about the post that I made after the fact with the link to your website that that linkedin influencer oh she apologized by the way oh yeah she, she stated that i was clearly an ai generated non-human yeah just, and that he obviously was not married to anybody and he was just justin goes if if no one was on here and could defend herself you would realize how genuine and sweet she is she's a she's a treasure that we should protect at all costs oh my gosh yeah, that no. is so are you blind no no i'm dead serious I'm going to cry. That's so sweet. So it's it's my pinned post on my account right now. So. She's like, Are you really going to cry? Seriously? That was so sweet. So this is the first part. Aww. So who really believes this is a pick of an agent with a bunch of shrugging and facepalm emojis? Justin, we protect Nona. Nona is a national treasure. I've been waiting for this day to come. Surprised it took so long. Some I don't even know who this person is. And then that was my retweet with her picture. And then that's okay. Ugliness isn't an outside thing. It shows itself when you can't help but talk smack on another person who can't even defend themselves. If no one were here, this Joan lady would see really quickly how kind she is and her comment and how out of line her comment was. Aww. And then she came back about a day later and said, well, I would humbly apologize. Okay. I accept the apology, and thank what? you, Justin, for the kind words. I'm clearly, uh, thank you. What's a top 25 global bigot leader? Uh, THGT stands for an acronym for something, maybe? Well, that'd be an initialism, because it doesn't make a word, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's an abbreviation. But HR Influencer. I help leaders apply human behavior science to improve results. That's the person who was an asshole to my wife right. on Twitter. Called me an AI generated. Yeah. Non-human. So the USA tweet, I just, based on what I had seen on Facebook and Reddit and Twitter, the sentiment towards USA seems to be shit. And initially, when they started running ads and Gronk and you know, NFL stuff and things like that, like every we talked about this with the nonprofit thing. Every company needs marketing. Mm -hmm. But you should probably read the writing on the wall when your entire demographic doesn't like it. You should probably take a step back and reevaluate what you're doing. So people are not happy with them paying millions and millions of dollars for Gronk. He's not even a veteran. There are a lot of veterans that you could have paid that are just as famous within the veteran space. You could get, you know, I don't know, we're talking about Tim and Jocko. There's, you know, NFL players, there's UFC fighters, there's authors. You could get 
uh, what's his name? Jack Carr that wrote the books that, uh, what's his name? Chris is doing the. Sure. No, who? What? Jack the Carr. other Chris. Oh, um, I know which, uh, blanking on the name too. Yeah, not blacklist. Something terminal list. Yes, that one. You that evaded get, both of you, our brains. You, you can get um, Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor. Everyone knows who he is. There are so many people that you could have used. Mm -hmm. And you probably still would have alienated some people, but it probably would have been fewer. And one of the biggest complaints that people have had is that it, the quality of their product in all aspects have gone down. Their insurance rates have skyrocketed. They've taken banking benefits away from longtime members who have had, when, when I first had my USA debit card, my dad, and I didn't know this, I didn't think it was crazy because I didn't know any better. You know, I was 19 or whatever when I got my account. I didn't know about rewards cards and stuff. My dad thought it was crazy that I had a rewards, cash rewards debit card. It was like unheard of. Okay. And all of these other benefits, like, you know, great savings, interest rates and things like that. And all of it has basically evaporated. One of the biggest selling points of being a USA Today member was that you, I gotta get rid of this dog. She's gonna drive me fucking nuts. Well, we're back. It's probably gonna be a weird jump take. Going back to Gronk and USA and running commercials and sponsoring the NFL and all that stuff. What percentage of the U.S. population do you think are veterans? 25. 6.2, roughly. That's significantly lower than I... It's only something like 1% ever served. And 6.2 is the number of living veterans. So 6.2, right? And let's say you have two qualifying family members up and down. Two parents, two children, right? Okay. So that puts you at maybe 20% of the U.S. population. Okay. That is an immediate family member would be better. Okay. When you take the shotgun approach and market to everyone, you're completely missing the majority of your demographic. The majority of veterans don't necessarily consume the NFL. Some people just don't like football at all. Some people like football and don't like the NFL. Some people don't like Rob Gronkowski, and he's the only face. So, so anyways, bad jump cut again. You, you're marketing to a demographic that's not even your customer base. Correct. It'd be like running women's dress ads to me and people like me. I'm not ever going to buy them. It's not a product for me, so it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to pay that much money for one player. Look how uh, all of the other insurance companies do it. Other than, okay, State Farm has kind of gotten, they've like played into their thing over the years, but the, the original Jake from State Farm wasn't anybody that anybody knew. The other, the husband and wife, I don't know who they were. Did you know who they were? Do you know? I don't think they're even actors. I think it was just a one-off thing. Mm -hmm. The guy from, what's it, Allstate? In mm -hmm. good hands? Mm -hmm. uh, he was an actor from the mid-90s. Yeah, yeah. No, he still is an actor. He's still actively acting yeah. besides Allstate commercials? Yeah. In what? Spider-Man. And... Oh, I had no idea. Or is that the right guy? I don't think so. Jay, Jay. I know him from Law & Order SVU from the original like first three seasons. Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong guy. But it's, they're the they're the same guy. They're they are they're the same guy. Essentially, you can't say that. Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. Anyways, and then obviously, Flo from Progressive has always been Flo from Progressive. Right. She's you know that's all she is. Yeah, they've added like more characters to their commercials, but like it's never right. anybody that they're paying millions and millions of dollars right, for. Right. So, anyways, so their product has gone downhill. They've removed benefits. And now they're marketing to people that aren't even in their customer demographic or they're people that don't even qualify. Even if you assume that 100%, you're only hitting 6.2% at a maximum. It's a complete waste of money. It's not, it's not targeted advertising. And then 
that screenshot that I took about a, a couple weeks ago that I showed you. And we both immediately identified it was a stock photo that we've seen in Canva. And I mean, Canva is not their own repository for stock images. So that's a stock image that people have used in Canva mm -hmm. and other marketing and content creation platforms. They've gone right to the stock image site, like Pexels or whatever, and licensed it or whatever. Everyone has used that image. You've used that image. Mm -hmm. I have. So they're putting low effort into the actual communities that their members come from and trying to become a household brand of some kind. When you can't even have access to them unless yeah. you are directly married to or related to a veteran. So I would say over the last couple of years, most everybody who has USA for their personal insurance, whether it's their home, auto, boat, or all three, or various, um, I don't even know if they cover life, health. I, I don't know. No, that you have to have. Uh, okay. I'm I don't sorry. know the extent of USA's reach, so I'm not going to speak on anything more than what I do know. They were partnered with like Prudential and TransUnion for different things in the past. I don't know. I don't know what their current offering is because it's not even worth my while to even shop it. But right. So you had USA for your personal auto for several years, mm -hmm. and you were a member because you were a veteran or are a veteran, but you were going to continue to be a insurance member of them for years and years until I brought to your attention, you're paying way too much for what you have. Right. Bare bones coverage for double what anybody else can offer. Right. I would say you are the primary example of most USAA members in the insurance. But people are catching on to it because now, right. so overwhelmingly previously, if you had an issue with USAA, you were an outlier and you were probably the problem, which does happen. Somebody doesn't like an outcome mm -hmm. and they complain about it. Mm -hmm. But that was the exception to the rule. Okay. So, okay, let's backtrack again real quick. When I was at Fort Benning, that was the first time I got insurance through them because okay. when I was outside the country, I didn't need it. Right. And I obviously didn't have it before I joined the Army. Right. So as a 21, 22-year-old, 21-year-old with a VA muscle car, I was paying like $80 a month for car insurance, full coverage. Right. But that also depends on your location. Right. So. But, I'm, but I'm just saying like even even that, like $80, that's if you could find insurance for $80 nowadays, it's it's impossible. What car could you find anywhere in the country that you get insurance for $80? Like, that was the best place for a service member to get insurance. You couldn't get it. Any, even if you could get it, it would be outrageously overpriced because you were or are um, high risk or whatever you guys use. You're in the industry, so whatever you use to qualify you said you were 21 at the time? Yeah. So you'd already had your driver's license for more than three years. It doesn't matter after that. That's Andrew, it doesn't matter after that. And also, sex is not a matter. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. As long as you have been with a driver's license for more than three years. That's not how they made it seem. It doesn't matter. That's not how they made it seem. Here in North Carolina. Obviously, every state is different. But here in North Carolina, if you've had your driver's license. No, if you get your driver's license at 30 years old. Yeah, you're starting fresh, yeah. and it's not until after you're 33 that your rate will drastically go down. But as long as you got your driver's license at a normal time at like 16, 17 years old, by the time you're 21, your rate is the same as a 45-year-old, whether you're male or female. Does it matter if you change states, change driver's license, or if you're an out-of-state resident? Again, I can't speak to other states, okay. but here in North Carolina, that, that, those are the two simple rules. So when I moved back to Indiana, though, it, it almost tripled. But the assumption was snow, ice. Yeah, I, I, and just like here in Wilmington, it is the highest rate for your auto insurance than it is anywhere else in the state of North Carolina. You can go to Charlotte. You can go to Raleigh. Here in Wilmington, it's going to be more expensive. So 
that's to say that, like, as I was stating, it's ridiculous now rates in general. That is correct. But the convenience factor of having USA, yeah. having the technology, because... And it's the sense of security. You're within a community of like-minded individuals and you've bought into that security. Well, so some of the benefits that you might not think of, and I've run into problems with this recently, the first one I'm gonna tell you is travel. When you're in the military, you travel pretty frequently, whether that's for your own vacations, taking leave, whatever, you're on TDY, you're going to training, you're deploying. There's a lot of different reasons why you might be traveling. Mm -hmm. It was never, ever a headache. You never even had to call them. You didn't have to give them any. You could. They had an option that you could give, hey, I'm going to travel. So if it was something really weird, you know, and then all of a sudden you were spending a lot of money, they wouldn't lock out your card. Mm -hmm. So, and last year when I went to Iowa for the War Warrior Rising Gala and uh, uh, fundraiser out there, right. I had, we had no issues when we went to Salt Lake City that I can remember. For for the same organization, went to Salt Lake City, no issues. I'd fly all the way to Iowa, land, get an Uber, no issue. I get to my hotel. The hotel happens to be a casino resort. This is not like something that I picked, and I'm not a gambler. I've gone to the casino. I can count on, on one hand how many times, maybe two hands, how many times I've ever been to a casino. Meanwhile, I've never been in my entire life. So, Carry on. So I land. And your card doesn't work. Yeah. And because I had to book or I had to do the security, whatever, with a credit card, I didn't use my USAA card. I used like a Capital One card, I think. And did that, got my key, went to the ATM because I told you I was going to take out like $100. And that's all I was going to, if I lost $100, I wasn't going to. At the casino. Yeah. Wasn't going to do anything else. It was late, you know. I missed one of the events because I went the like at the the day of one of the first events. I was just going to be there for the pitch competition and the gala, and that was going to be it. And I'm getting this weird error at the ATM, so I try a different ATM. Try a different ATM. Somebody else behind me actually had a similar error, so I thought maybe it was just the ATMs. So and I don't get a call, I don't get a text, which they had done previously, like periodically once in a while. I'll go to Walmart and I'll get. A text notification, hey, did you spend $73 at Walmart? And then like two other previous transactions, yes or no, reply Y or N. That never happened. So I had no suspicion that it was on my end. Mm -hmm. I checked my account to see, I don't know, maybe something happened to my money. Nope. Several thousand dollars in there. Mm -hmm. No issue. So I go up to the um, little diner, like pickup counter to order some food. And I was like, just for shits and giggles, I tried to use that card there as well. And it declined. And it gave a thing on the receipt that said, like, card fraud detection. I don't remember the exact terminology that was on it. So I paid with my credit card and went and sat down and I called USAA. And, of course, this is super fucking embarrassing because there's other people there and they see my card getting declined. Mm -hmm. And I have people who I've never fucking met before saying, oh, um, you know, I can, I can pay for that for you. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. But it's fucking embarrassing. How did I get all the way there? Meanwhile, you've had your account hacked, what, three times now since we've been Not, together? No, my account has never been hacked. Okay, my sorry. card number your has card been stolen. Your card has been stolen multiple times. And uh, South Carolina and Texas are the two that I remember yep. were transactions. Was there a third one no. or was it just two? Okay, just so those. two, two times your card has been duplicated. Yep. And Skims, pin and chip. Pin and chip. And transactions multiple yep. in Texas and South Carolina. And USA did not catch on. Right. And stole lots of money from yeah. you. Yeah. I caught on. Right. And they so ended up reversing it. But... It's like none of it makes any sense yeah. to me. But so meanwhile, I have a tiny little credit union what, and when I call knock on wood, I've never So I called USA. Fortunately they have 24 seven customer service. So I call them and explain, Hey, I'm trying to take money out of an ATM in my hotel and my card is apparently blocked for fraud. 
So they ask me to verify all my information, go through, verify the attempted transactions, all this stuff. They unblock it. By this time, I'm frustrated. I and need... it's like late. It's like 11 p.m. Yeah. or something crazy late. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's getting back from the other event, the pheasant hunt, and everything at the other venue. Mm -hmm. And so I've I just had a couple of beers. I'm talking to people because I knew the veterans as they were coming in. So I'm there greeting them. I'm talking to the members of the organization as they're showing up, come back. And by that time, you know, I'm, I'm having to go find the photographer and videographer so that him and I can go walk through the event venue and get things set up. So I'm doing social media. He's doing professional photography and videography and having to set up and all that. And so the organization that I worked for at the time, we were doing the editing of it. So me as the account manager, it was my responsibility to tell him what I wanted and then leave it to him as I'm not a photographer or videographer to figure out what to do with his equipment and his subs and everything like that. So we do that. Night goes on super late. I finally go to bed, wake up the next morning. I go to get breakfast. My car's locked again at the same place. I never so left. Frustrating. I never left. So here I am confidently thinking I'm going to swipe my debit card and USA fucking blocks it again. So that was kind of one of my first real negative experiences where I started actually acknowledging other people saying USA sucks. This is all to say that I made a post that said, is the general consensus now that USA is not only trash for insurance, but also banking. Kind of sad they fell. Uh, they used to be great. 46,141 impressions organically. I didn't tag anybody else. I didn't. But you tagged USA. Yeah. Okay. And then, but Just asking for clarification. But nobody else. So typically if you want somebody to, if you want your tweet to get in front of that person's audience, you have to proceed, like put it at the beginning of the tweet, their handle and put a period before it. I don't know if that still works anymore, but that was back in the day. You put period at USAA would be how you would start your tweet and then whatever after it. And then it would show it to people that followed USA, for example. Okay. So the algorithms have all changed. I don't think that actually, people still do it out of habit and I don't think it actually is meaningful in any way. Okay. So I didn't do that. It was in like the middle, it was like the seventh word of my tweet. Okay. 1,047 engagements. Out of those, three were Impossible. stands. Yeah. All the rest were overwhelmingly negative. They dropped me for this. They raised my rates this much. They canceled this. I've seen people talking about, you know, going to their like chemotherapy treatments and USA blocking their card on transactions for paying their fucking doctor's bill. Mm. That's so sad. Yeah. And I just blurred together scary and sad into slad. one. I said scad. Scad. Wow. That's okay. Nobody, nobody knows because I was talking there with this fucking bumbling idiot. So, yeah, then I started, of course, the opportunity arose to promote Nona because she's an insur insurance agent. Which was not his intent to no, begin with. No. It was just him being him, tweeting on a random evening. And people were like, oh, I see what this is. This is a, a veiled attempt to promote your wife's insurance agency. And I see what you're trying to do. One person was like, why would you, why would you drag one agency just to promote your wife? That seems kind of gummy. And I'm like, uh, they would do the same thing if the opportunity arose. If, if I were to say I'm having a bad experience with State Farm and I tagged USAA, USAA would be like, hey, we'd love to help we'd you out. We'd love to help you out. Just because I'm a normal guy, it's not okay. And we quite literally went through this ourselves of. I'm here to help out and he's no longer with USAA yeah. and I'm saving him lots of doll hairs in the process. Still with them for banking. Just not for, for insurance. Now. For now. Everybody's saying, well, with, with a couple exceptions, everybody's saying Navy Federal because they're a credit union. So the benefits are still there, but I don't know. They do also have other banking products that USA doesn't offer like business banking. Oh. So the nonprofit could use them as well eventually if we didn't like who we're with right now okay good to know haven't had any issues other than their fucking system it's old clunky straight out of like 2002 i believe it but otherwise 
have any issues that I know of. Okay. We'll see. It's not like we've used it for anything. It pays it pays the uh hosting bill for both of the servers that the sites are on, the wiki and the actual whatever you want to call it. Because we're still very small. Yeah. That's basically all it does because there's not a significant amount of money in there. So with that being said, tell us about your experience with USA. And if you've had a bad experience. And I'm not an AI generated non human. They don't know. Have you ever seen Nona in public? If you have, send the picture. Now we're going to get inundated with random ass pictures. Actually, if people actually can't, so that's one thing that is good about um, YouTube, especially if we're talking like YouTube versus TikTok for kids consuming videos. Okay. There's no messaging feature. Oh. If you wanted to contact somebody on YouTube, you have to do it in the comments so it's public. Okay. But they can find us on all of our social media. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, Tumblr, Pinterest, other ones. We're on all He's the, in charge of all of it. We're on all the mainstream platforms. We're not on any weird. We're not on Trump's platform. We're not on TikTok. We're not on. And we're not on OnlyFans. No, they rejected us. Yeah. I actually removed the uh, OnlyFans short link from our descriptions and our videos started gaining traction again. So I think even though it wasn't, the short link wasn't even pointing to OnlyFans. Everybody was had, getting rickrolled if you clicked on yeah, it. Yeah. But it had the word. So it was lemax.app slash HWSR OnlyFans. And then you would get rickrolled if you clicked it. I think just having the word in the description Buried us? Yep. Interesting. So I, w- I went back through and removed it from every video. And I think most of the shorts, not all the shorts. And then all of a sudden everything started gaining traction organically okay. again. Yeah. Well, after they see this episode, they're going to go... Wah, wah, wah. Well, the context of the transcript should matter. Maybe not. Nobody knows what YouTube does except YouTube. Not even YouTubers. Anyways. Anyway. That's been a one hour and... 12 minute 15 second long wait one hour one minute and 20 second long episode before i run the outro anything else you would like to say other than they should buy insurance from you yeah buy insurance for me buy insurance from her goodbye